I'm here in Jacksonville, Florida, named after our president and the first military governor of Florida, Andrew Jackson. We're gonna tour you around Jacksonville and show you some of the historic sites that you can visit. All right, I brought Lane to this building. He doesn't know why. I'm sure a lot of you don't know why, but Lane, looking at the building, what do you think this place is? Some sort of Hispanic fooderia. It is indeed. Can you guess, do you have any guess as to why I brought you here? No. This is the location of the first ever Burger King. <laughs> they closed down in the 1970s, so here it is. A Welcome dream come true. to Burger King. Tortas and flatas to the heart's delight. This place was the very first Burger King location ever in the whole world. It was originally called Insta Burger King. It opened in 1953 and closed in 1970. After it opened, Burger King moved most of its operations to Miami where it's still headquartered today. So this one fell out of use pretty much. Then it became Stan's Sandwich Shop. And now it's this Mexican restaurant. If you want to visit, the address is 7156 Beach Boulevard. I'm here at Fort Caroline, situated on the St. John River. This is a French Huguenot colony founded in Florida in 1564, which is one year before St. Augustine was founded. This was ransacked by the Spanish in 1565 and completely destroyed. They left the women and children, but they killed almost every man. What's it called? Fort Caroline. Sweet Caroline. Da, da, da. <laughs> so, Along with this being a competition of the Spanish versus the French, these were also French Huguenots. So it was a matter of Protestants versus Catholics. So the Spanish thought these people were heretics. So it was obviously never going to work. It was, Im it was, imperial, uh, it was imperial interest and also religious interest to play. Look at the fish and the crabs. Animal Planet. This is it. Eat your heart out, animal lovers. So during the time of the attack in 1565, this fort was basically operated by a skeleton crew. And the Spanish soldiers came when both a Spanish fleet and a French fleet were going to reinforce their forts. The Spanish and the French both had a battle off the coast of Florida, which basically ended with nothing in a draw. So the French went to St. Augustine and were repelled and their fleet destroyed by the defenses of St. Augustine. Meanwhile, the Spanish came here and slaughtered everybody. Huge French L. As you can see, there's cannons right here to represent the original settlers of Florida and their military history. And directly behind you, there is a giant United States Navy base, from what I understand from Justin. The expert here, this is actually the third, third largest, largest naval Navy base, base by personnel in the United States. And right there, boom, freedom flies. That really shows how important and strategic a position we are on on the St. John's River right now, opening up in the mouth to the Atlantic. Right. So that's pretty interesting. They actually have a list and names of all the people killed at this fort. Also, something to be noted, this is just a replica fort. This isn't the real fort. Like in St. Augustine, you'll see real things. This was completely destroyed, burned to the ground. A lot of this was obviously made out of wood because they hadn't been able to build up real fortification yet. It was only a year old. So obviously this is all replica. Another important point, if you come here, they're open from nine to five and we just barely made it. So make sure that you get here on time. It's Wednesday through Sunday, very weird hours. One really cool feature of this fort that you can see right down here, yeah, is they had a moat, which obviously this is Florida. You could dig two feet and you'll have, you'll have a puddle. So <laughs> doing it right next to the river and a swamp slash marshland, definitely wasn't hard to source the water. But oh my God, look at these beautiful houses they got across here. I would definitely not mind having one of these. I'm sure that's a little out of my price range. You guys could change that though. All you gotta do, <laughs> Coming from France, which is temperate, a temperate Mediterranean climate, to this. And I'm sure none of them had ever seen an alligator before, which you can't hardly throw a rock without hitting an alligator in Florida. They're everywhere. 
and that's after they nearly went extinct already. They came and they were all just out. Like they, they'd never been touched by seeing hunters. Seeing a giant prehistoric, you know, it's a dinosaur. I, I can only imagine what those people must have thought seeing that. And, and trying to establish their homes there. <laughs> and trying to make contact with the original Floridians, the Timu Kwan Indians, who are essentially, actually not even just essentially, they're extinct now. From disease and from war against the Europeans. So something I think is really cool that I don't know if it gets enough attention really in history. The canoe, which I think this is probably the beginnings of a canoe, right? That's what it looks like to me, actually originates in the Americas. Europeans learned about how to make canoes like this here. And now it's a huge popular pastime all over the United States. When I grew up, I used to go canoeing and kayaking all the time. And this is where it came from. One thing you're gonna need to remember when you're coming to Florida, bring mosquito spray, bug spray. We are being attacked ferociously by them. And that is not common for me. I, I usually don't get too many mosquito bites, but they are definitely out and about right now. I really wanna stress how deadly this environment is. There's a reason that Florida didn't have a giant population boom until air conditioning was invented. People die from heat stroke every year in Florida, for one. For two, before malaria vaccinations were a thing, people would die en masse from those. And three, the wildlife, like I said, alligators, crocodiles, mountain lions, black bears. There's, those are scary, but the scariest of all. The number I would one say. killer of humans on Earth, actually. The mosquito. So for this trip, I would say Jacksonville is probably the only really southern city that we're going to be in. Some people might disagree with that. Some people think that Florida's not southern at all. Some people think it's all southern. Some I wouldn't say that at all. I think when you're on the east coast of Florida, Anything south of Jacksonville, you're going out of the south, you're in your whole, a whole different element, a whole different realm. So we're here at a southern eatery, a, a southern restaurant eatery, and uh, we're going to try their food. We're going to say what we think. Lane's lived all over the south. He's going to compare. And right now I got a little red velvet cake to start things off. Dessert before dinner, you know how it goes. As DJ Khaled would say, this is the best music. <laughs> this is really good. This is really good red velvet cake. I'm not even gonna lie. It's really spongy. It's dense, but it's moist. It's a very moist, dense, spongy cake. Really good flavor. The sweetness just hits you in the mouth, and I like the nuts. Anybody who's ever been to the American South knows. There's three ways to know if you are in the South. One, sweet tea. Two, lemonade. Three, macaroni and cheese. I throw grits in there, but that's just if it's on the menu. It doesn't even have to be that good. So, I got sweet tea and I got the lemonade. This is cherry limeade, so a little, little out there, but still I have high expectations. So, let's see if we are currently in the South. I'll round up my cousins, because yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh oh. Sprung early. I don't think it does. This tastes like it's got alcohol in it. <laughs> does it? <laughs> it tastes like it, but I don't think it does. Smell it. Maybe. Delectable. Cheesy mac and cheese. The french fries look well seasoned. And the fish and shrimp look really good. Your mac and cheese looks very good too. Staple of the South, fried chicken. We're waiting on our Louisiana hot sauce right now. All right, first thing you should always do before you put condiments on food, try it raw. See what the actual flavor is. See if they actually cook well. 
Very good macaroni and cheese. These fries feel pretty crispy. I'll be honest, this is maybe the best fried chicken I've ever had. I really do think this is better. Like, so if you can picture a KFC, it's like that, but then even richer flavors, and it's like perfect crunch. It's, this is, this is like perfect. This is peak fried chicken. It's really important to note that they cook this to order. This was made fresh, it's searing hot, it's piping hot, they just took this out. It's fresh, fresh. We tried Sweet Mama's in Jacksonville, Florida. What do you think? Really good place. It qualified Jacksonville as the South. Definitely recommend you try it if you're out here. If you're visiting Florida and you want to actually try Southern food, you got to make the hike north. You got to come up here. You got to. I, I don't know if it's going to be better down further, but it's definitely good here, and I can vouch for that. That's going to be it for Jacksonville. See you guys at the next place. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below. Goodbye. <laughs>